Warning, the renegade recruiter is not for the soft, timid, or faint-hearted. If you need permission or seek approval from your mother, spouse, mates in the pub, or anyone else for that matter, this really isn't for you. If any of what you've heard puts you off in the slightest, I advise you not to listen any further. You've been warned. Prepare yourself for the no bullshit, zero fluff. Quick, dirty, and uncensored secrets for any serious recruitment, staffing, and search business owner who wants to earn more money with less work and fewer headaches, without having to kiss ass or bend over backwards to please anyone. He's a relentless and fearless renegade who will stop at nothing to reveal the harsh, unforgiving, and brutal truth about what it really takes to succeed in this business. He's a guy people love to hate and hate to love. It's your host, Terry Edwards. The Renegade Recruiter is unleashed. Hello, hello, hello. This is Terry Edwards, Renegade Recruiter, and welcome to another episode of Renegade Recruiter Unleashed. And of course, we're joined by our co-host, Drew. Drew, how are you, buddy? I'm good, thanks, Terry. How are you? Yeah, really, really good. And my guest today is Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach. Jim, thank you ever so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, Terry and Drew. Thanks for having me on. Not at all, not at all. Jim, it's just that you said earlier, a bit earlier, that you said off, off record, but can you just say again what you said about two minutes ago, off record, please, and just to share with my audience? Well, you're about- assuming my memory is intact. <laughs> no, you talked about the resemblance with Drew and I, you, how you thought we Oh, were- right, were- right. I thought you guys were twins. I thought you were brothers. <laughs> I love hearing that, Jim. I really do. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> you're 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 a young looking father, and uh, Drew, Drew Drew has obviously inherited your good looks. <laughs> Seriously, uh, Jim, real real pleasure uh, to uh, to have you on the on the podcast today. Jim, for those that don't don't know you, Jim, can you just give us an overview of what you do and who you are, please? So I started. I'm actually celebrating as as we're doing this interview, 15 years as an entrepreneur. Um, I started in the uh, newsletter business. Uh, doing newsletters for companies, and then about five years into that, I launched my first online business, which uh, I started learning about leverage. I know you and I talked about that before with leveraging your skill, your talent, leveraging the time of others. Create an online program called No Hassle Newsletters, um, and then No Hassle Social Media. I launched Concierge Print on, and On Demand, a, a, a article writing service. I've written six books. I have, I think, four different home study courses and seven years ago and this is what keeps me busy today I started the dream business uh, mastermind and coaching program and I do a live event called dream business Academy you're a busy man well I am busy but the the truth of it is I have a team of 13 uh, virtual assistants that help me run my various online businesses so in reality uh, what consumes my time uh, basically three days a week is the coaching and the marketing which a big part of my marketing is doing interviews with um, folks like yourself yeah awesome awesome so Jim tell us something about you that most people don't know so an interesting or funny story uh, something they don't know. I'm a pretty open book, but um, I learned how to water ski when I was seven years old. And way back in those dark ages, the water skis resembled chunks of plywood with some duct tape, I think. But um, <laughs> little did I know, all these years later, I have a, a love for the water and I have become a boater myself. And in fact, here's something. Well, some people know it, but Stephanie and I, my wife and I are going to be, uh, we're selling our home. We're going to buy a 45-foot boat. We're going to live aboard and I'll be able to work aboard for, for a few years. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. <laughs> and when, when do you plan to do that, Jim? Well, we're in the process of it right now, but um, we'll we'll officially get on the boat and and start that uh, amazing journey in uh, May of of uh, seventeen. Well done, well, you living the dream. Living the dream. As long as I've got an internet connection and phone service, I can coach my clients anywhere. And um, so that yeah, we, we can be mobile now. We don't plan to be. Uh, you know, uh, burning up diesel fuel at record. Yeah, you know, we're going to spend next summer in Rhode Island, which where one of my daughters and uh, grandkids live. And then in the in the fall, we'll take the what's called the intercoastal waterway. We'll go down to Florida, and we'll spend our our first winter in Florida, living aboard our uh, our boat. Awesome, living the dream. 
Yeah, live right. the dream, baby. Yeah, you know what? You you can only work so hard uh, for so long because, as I like to say, we we're all, all playing on the main stage right now. This is not a dress rehearsal, and sooner or later the the curtain's going to come down. And um, I, for one, don't want any regrets, or I don't want to, you know, snap my finger and go, "Darn it, why didn't we do that?" Yeah, good for you. Good Jim, for you, Jimmy. I mean, you mentioned that you've you sort of set up recently celebrating uh, fifteen years as an entrepreneur. Can you tell us a bit more about your background, your business journey, and how you ended up where you are now? I started my first job when I was 15, and I started working for a um, an entrepreneur. And while well, I had several uh, positions, I've always worked for entrepreneurial companies. Um, I helped grow a, a franchise from 14 stores to 80 stores in 18 states. I helped start an association in the music business, but I always had my hand in marketing. And every company I worked at, I, I was producing a newsletter for them, which is how I got into the uh, newsletter business. I did my first newsletter when I was 21. It was a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, black and white, on a typewriter. This is pre-computer. And um, taping down pictures. Okay, and- Jim, I've got to interrupt it. A typewriter, I'm, I'm a bit too young for What, what is one of those? <laughs> Let me explain to Drew. It's that thing where you go, where you go, click, click on A, B, C, D, and this arm slaps the page and puts a one letter at a time, if you can believe it. Yeah. And um, I, you know, Terry, I don't know if, if you're. I think you even look too young for this, but I used to hold that thing on the glass of the copier, press down so there'd be, be no shadows on the pictures I taped down. <laughs> but um, you know, we got some really good success out of that very simple two-page black and white newsletter, and. You know, as any smart marketer will tell you, if you do something and it works, you should do more of it. So that's that's how I kind of get into the newsletter uh, business. Yeah, do you, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that um, newsletters. We have a, a newsletter ourselves. Is there a, is there a formula uh, that things that should be in a newsletter and, and not in a newsletter? I'd be just be fascinated by that. You know, the thing is, um, I want to clarify, while I do believe and I have my own email newsletter, sometimes called an e-zine, I, I am talking about print and mail, paper and ink, put it in the post office uh, newsletter. So, because, sorry, Jim. So, so was I. My apologies. Yeah, this hard copy newsletters. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. Most people that think, OK, I'm going to do a newsletter. I think it's the right thing to do. They make it all about their business, about their staff, about this. That, and it's totally boring to their readers. The newsletter, it has to be fun, interesting, informative and entertaining from the reader's perspective. So a typical uh, owner may say, hey, we just won an award from some association. We got a new truck. Let's show a picture of that. I mean, if you're going to get anybody's time, if you're going to ask your your customers, clients, or patients or whatever to uh, put aside maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and spend that time with you via the newsletter they're holding, you you better not bore them because the next thing that the next time that hits the mailbox, they're probably not going to even crack the uh, wafer seal. Yeah. 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 Now, what what in your opinion um, are the main benefits for any business uh, providing a hard copy newsletter? So what most companies want is more profits. They want growth and higher profits. That comes from stronger relationships with your customers, okay? And so, you know, you don't want to do, put out a newsletter because it's fun because frankly it's not. Take some time. You got to write the thing or put out content and so it's not that. You you do it because it's one of the strongest ways I know of to create stronger bonds with your customers. And when you have st- a stronger bond with your customers, they will stay connected with you longer, and they're more likely to spend more, come back, and they're also likely to refer you. And by the way, you may have com- customers that want to refer you, but if you're not in front of them all the time, they're going to forget your name. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the great benefits is stronger relationships, more referrals, and more repeat business. Very good. Thanks for that, Jim. Yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm must confess I'm a... Um, well, both Drew and I are big fans of hard copy newsletters, and I uh, yeah, would certainly endorse everything that you've said there. Excellent. There you go. Jimmy, in your experience, the sticking with the newsletter subject, how often, I mean, if someone was listening to this right now and they, they, they want to use newsletters, print newsletters to build a better bond with their, I guess, potential clients and also current clients as well, how often, well, how, how, how big should it be? How many pages? And how often should you send it out as well? 
Yeah, good question. So it should be uh, what I call a four-page newsletter. That's an 11 by 17 sheet of paper folded once to eight and a half by 11. That makes it a four-page newsletter. That's all you need to do. Yes. Uh, and by the way, black and white, if you want to save a little money, black and white is just as effective unless there's a there's a few industries where I think color pays off. If you're a florist, if you're a dentist who does teeth whitening, if uh, maybe a couple that I'm not thinking of, but we're color really makes a difference but for the most part you just need to recognize it's a relationship building tool it's not a sales letter per se although you know I think you will get sales from stronger relationships but it's not something you mail and people are going to come running in oh am I in time to get this special you don't want to put specials you know product of the month things like that so the frequency is monthly you want to mail your print newsletter monthly and you want to do if you're going to do an, an email version you want to do that weekly so weekly and monthly and I'll give your readers one more tip that absolutely costs zero dollars but will greatly enhance the effectiveness you mail your newsletter the same day or the same one or two days every single month because if you think about when you go to your mailbox every day and you get mail out you generally have uh, what's called an A pile or B pile you have your important stuff you have your your crap stuff and so what's important is maybe it's your mortgage your bills your insurance magazines you subscribe to all of those things I just named they come pretty much on the same day they hit your mailbox the same day every month and and the stuff that comes sporadically coupons flyers valpac whatever that stuff is generally called junk mail okay so simply by mailing your newsletter every every month the same day it'll arrive the same day and over a little bit of time it will have a higher perceived value simply by doing that that's a great tip there that really is and, and people listening to this if they if they can they reach out to you and you, you can give them advice and so on on this sort of thing jim what for free? <laughs> Just kidding. You can, you can tell we're doing this before lunch. A little ram here. No, you know what? Um, let me give a URL. It's called nohasslenewsletters.com. No hassle newsletters with an S dot com. I actually show samples. There's 13 different templates I show. I talk about the type of content you want to have. It's a. It's obviously a website for my program, but it's very informative. There's a ton of information there. Excellent. Thanks for that, Jim. Uh, I know a lot of people listening to it will find that will find that really useful to be able to go there and, and get some uh, get some information out. Thank you. Awesome. So, uh, Jim, we, we, we've spoken quite a lot about newsletters and and, and how you started with newsletters. Where, how how did you sort of go from newsletters to where you are today? So my first business, um, like so many um, people who st start a small business, I was writing and designing newsletters, meeting with the clients, answering the phone, doing deliveries. I was overseeing printing and mailing, paying the bills, cleaning my office occasionally. If it had to be done in the business, I was doing it. I mean, that's really how a lot of people start. And um, after about five years, um, you know, I'd, I had had a multiple six-figure business, so I was doing well financially, but I had no life at all. And it wasn't until my wife Stephanie said when are we gonna go on vacation we haven't been on vacation like in five years and I and I thought my first like my first thought was can we afford it? I said yeah we can put together a vacation but then I thought oh my goodness who's gonna be my business will like cease to exist yeah. and, uh, you know I think back in those days you know I think we had real answering machines like something you actually hit the button on instead of what we have today with ring central and things like that but I really worried guys about what would happen if I was gone for a week like would my customers call and I wouldn't be there I could follow up with them I wouldn't be responsive but anyway I made a decision that you know I, I kind of reinvented myself once five years ago I'm gonna do it again so I started learning all about direct response uh, copywriting I learned about internet marketing I learned about leverage and very important question um, that I learned uh, from reading, it was either Think and Grow Rich or The New Psycho Cybernetics, two very similar books about mindset. But it was basically, if I want to do this, what do I have to do, right? And so the question that I asked myself is, how do I leverage my skill and talent writing and designing newsletters every month, but seek to get paid by multiple people instead of one client at a time and then find myself hoping, wishing and praying they come back next month or next quarter or any time in the, you know, in the year. And 
that was a you you can you can take that question and make it fit your own business right and what what became known to me by way of the subconscious mind because it just stores everything that you see that you've heard etc i started thinking about um no what would become no hassle newsletters where i have i create a ton of content articles that people can use i create done for you templates that people can use and so instead of me actually going out and meeting with companies and chambers and and organizations nonprofits local to where i live i started getting clients all over the country and and very soon internationally in fact the uk is one of my uh the second biggest country that subscribes to my service and so that that's how it started, and of course, that got me excited. Again, when you do it once, you get excited. Let's do it again, and so I created my uh, print, my newsletter print on demand service. Then I created a thing called No Hassle Social Media, um, and I started growing different internet businesses. And somewhere around 2008, uh, some of the entrepreneurs that I would meet and, and hang out with at, at events and seminars, they started going, "How are you doing all that? How do you have multiple businesses and this, that, and the other thing?" And I took that as a sign that. I should coach them how to do it, not just share information. So I launched my so I launched my coaching business, and one of the best ways to grow a coaching business is become an author. So I wrote one book, and then I wrote six books in six years. I it's been two years since I wrote because you know it's actually kind of painful writing a book. Yeah, so I've, tell me about it, yeah. <laughs> but I wrote my last. So it, by the way, it took me eighteen months to uh, put out my first book, and my last two books I I wrote and published in sixty days. Awesome! Wow. Good man, excellent. So, if if I if people are listening to this right now, the question for you is, what do you what what do you do to help your clients? What is it that you do? What do you help help clients achieve? That's probably a better question. What do you help clients achieve? You know, I have been blessed with um, a gift of branding and marketing. And so, when I look at my clients' business, one of the things I ask prospective clients. So I. On my website, uh, you just can't sign up to be a client. It's a, by application only because I got to make sure it's a good fit. And I'll share with you one of the questions I ask. I said, "Are you prepared for your business to look completely different in 12 months than it does today?" And I'm not saying it will. I just want to know if you're open to that. Because if people are simply stuck by saying, "This is what I do," uh, for example, I'm a landscaper, and the only way I want to grow my business or increase my my wealth. Uh, is to do more landscaping. I can help you do that. I could probably help you with your your marketing branding. But one of the things that I do with Dream Business Coaching, I help people create multiple streams of revenue, because you know you can have a very good core business, but every every business has some um, some seasons to it, if you will. And so when when I find that I have a my core business is coaching, but I have all these other revenue streams, some big, some small, but they all work together to to create a nice income. And so I teach people how to do that. One of the one of the most important things I teach my clients is this: it's that you, you will earn significantly more income for who you are than what you do. And what that means, Terry and Drew, is it's not about the deliverable. So it's always you're going to earn much more money. And by the way, you know if you do it right, you'll probably never cold call again. You will have people drawn to you once we create the right brand and turn you into you know the expert in, in that area. Awesome. awesome. So, so real good stuff there. Awesome. Yeah. I, I remember reading somewhere that um, most millionaires have multiple streams of income. That's true. Mm. And if you think about it. And uh, so this is just for the sake of uh, a discussion on a, on a on the airwaves here. But if you if you earn a million dollars, my guess is you have one core business that probably generates five or six hundred thousand. You may have another business that does one hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand. You might have one that does fifty thousand. You might have something that does twenty thousand. But it's okay because those clients come in and then come into your funnel and and may go somewhere else on one of your other programs. But you're right. People who have high incomes usually do it by cobbling several different income sources together. Mm. Plenty of food for thought there. Jim, so, sorry, 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 sorry. Jim in, in terms of the clients that, that you work with, when they sort of pass the application stage and they become a client, what are some of the, uh, other than sort of the multiple streams of income that you've mentioned already, what are some of the biggest or most common things that you change in any business that, that's going to get them from sort of A to B, get them the results they're looking for? Pretty much what I just told you. Uh, I'll give you one example. Uh, one of my clients has been with me um, almost four years now. She is a uh, woman doctor in Canada. And um, <clears throat> she said, Jim, I'm tired of my practice just making enough to get by. 
I don't think she was starving, but certainly if you think you're a doctor and have a nice practice, you should be making a lot more. That was, was her goal. And um, what we did, I turned her into a celebrity, at least in the field that she's best known for. So we helped her publish a book. We, we got her doing videos and a podcast. We built a new website for her. Um, I completely revamped once her practice started growing. This, this, by the way, was the hardest uh, pill for her to swallow. I said, I want you to put in, a, put in place in your practice that you accept patients by application only. And she goes, no way. <laughs> why would I, why if somebody reads my book and listens to my podcast, would somebody, and they want to come to me, why would I not take them as a patient? I says, you want to earn more money, right? She goes, yeah. I said, then just do this. So what they do is people here, they, they call the front desk and they said, sure, um, here's, here's what happens. I'm going to email you an application and just fill it out. And, um, Dr. Carey reviews these on a weekly basis, and if she thinks there's a good fit for her to be able to help you, then I'll set up an interview. Um, we can do it uh, usually by Skype, and um, but if you're close by and it works in the schedule, we can we can have you uh, stop by as well. So then what happens is uh, they, they usually will do a Skype interview, but at this point, because there's a week in between usually receiving the application and getting a call back, some information has gone out, a copy of her book, et cetera, et cetera, and yeah. now... Now, when they get on the phone with her, it's like, oh, my gosh, you're Dr. Carey, right? And then when yeah. she accepts him as a patient, and I told her this. I warned her. I said, you will become a celebrity. And she very sheepish said, Jim, uh, I'm, that's not going to happen. And when the, first cust- when the first patient one day came in and, and wanted to get a picture with her, she said, I, Jim, I turned red. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it absolutely worked. And her practice is off the charts busy. And it is by application only. And her, and her rates have gone up significantly. Now, I will point out that the skill set that she has as a physician and who's able to help people with certain things – well, I think doctors continually, let's just be fair, will study and upgrade. But the skill set she has today from four years ago has not increased to the degree that her income has. That's yeah. a, that's perfect proof that it's not your deliverable. It's all about who you are and, and how the public perceives you. Awesome. Absolutely. Again, something, it's a message that we sort of repeat time and time again. You could have the best service, the best prices. It, it, it's, it's all about your marketing how effective you are at, at getting your message out to the right people at the right time and, and how you position yourself that's right one of my great mentors is dan kennedy and um you know uh when dan uh, read my latest book called decide um you know of course i market myself as the dream business coach and i help people create a dream business so the whole dream thing is that's my my shtick so to speak and um and Dan, who's very savvy on this because I learned most of it from him, in his testimonial for my book, he says, I, Jim Jim is very savvy, I'm paraphrasing, very savvy entrepreneur, and he teaches people to not just have any ordinary business but to have a dream business. Now, I got to tell you, when I read that from Dan Kennedy, I about jumped out of my seat. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> because, you know, and I, I, you know, he's a really nice guy despite his, his gruff exterior, but – um, you know, but that's the thing. So no matter what you do, why do you just want to be average? Why do you want to be ordinary? There, you know, if you're an accountant and somebody, uh, let's say uh, over in, in the UK, and um, we're, you told me where you lived earlier. Give, give me the name of where one of you guys lives. I think London. Okay, so let's say um, you're in London and you're an entrepreneur and you want to find a CPA and you either uh, Google accountants or you – I don't know if they even still exist over there, but that antiquated old thing called a phone book, whatever. Let's say you do that. You are going to find, I'm guessing, 50 to maybe 200 accountants probably within an hour's drive, right? Yeah. And so – how in the world does each one of those 200 accountants stand out and, and therefore receive your phone call or inquiry or email? And I can assure you it's not because they, one of them says, we add numbers really, 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 really well. So well you can't believe how accurate we are adding numbers. I mean that's not it. You no, know, so yeah. – the way I found my CPA many, many years ago is I asked around at some of the uh, uh, networks and chambers I was going to, who, what CPA do you use and do they specialize in home-based businesses? Because you could look at some ads for CPAs and they'll say, yeah, we, we, we take care of everybody from Fortune 100 down to you know home-based entrepreneurs. And so we bring our high-priced talent and we, we bring that to you. So it's, in other words, you're everything to everybody. I don't want that. I wanted somebody who's 
client base was 100% home-based entrepreneurs. That's what they do. And by the way, I use QuickBooks, and I said I want them to use QuickBooks because when I got a question, I only want to call them. I don't want to be going looking for the answer. And uh, this person's name uh, was told to me, and sure enough, he doesn't work with giant companies. He works with entrepreneurs and some small businesses, and they all use QuickBooks. And he studies and immerses himself in tax law as it pertains to home base. That's the and say that's the CPA that I want to have. So, mm-hmm. by asking the right questions, somebody's name is going to come up. And so whatever you do, I'm talking to listener now, whatever you do, you want to be the name that gets said. So who do you do this for? Oh, that's Joe. That's Joan or that's Marie or that's John. That's what that is your goal. You're listening to the Renegade Recruiter Unleashed podcast. For show notes, additional resources and podcast updates, head over to www.therenegaderecruiter.com. Yeah. yeah, and it's something that we, again, we advocate. I do you know, really enjoying this, Jim, because uh, we clearly um, think the same way. We're, we're, Drew and I are both big fans of Dan Kennedy and being to see him, and et cetera. And what you said there about the narrow, we, our terminology is the narrower your niche, the broader your appeal. Yeah. And you kind of, and I know you guys pronounce it incorrectly but the correct word by the way is niche. <laughs> yeah i'm good hey my assistant is from canada so she says niche too <laughs> i'm good with that yeah but seriously that's uh, yeah and you know as you're listening to this now you're saying yeah but my market's different and you know i've got to be all things to know all you haven't you, you puppycock just, yeah absolutely absolutely jim you, you've, you've shared a lot of successes with this and I'm, and I'm sure that on your journey every now and then the what's it's hit the fan i'm curious What's been some of the biggest mistakes you've made in your business life? Two questions. Well, biggest well you mistake. have to have an S on there. I don't know why it's got to be plural. Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and what advice would you give to anybody listening to how to avoid them? So two-part question there, Jim. Okay. I know this is going to sound incredibly cliche, but you know, I, I view mistakes as learning opportunities. Now, having said that, it sucks when you go through them, but it really does. If you if you're open your eyes, you can learn from it. Um, probably the most costly thing was um, after I started No Hassle Newsletters, I think it was be- either the second or the third business I was getting ready to um, – I started a partnership with a good friend of mine, and uh, we actually were going to call it No Hassle Marketing, which we did. We we st- formed this company. Um, we did everything right. We went to a, uh, a attorney, and we drew up partnership papers. We said, listen, we're good friends now, and if this doesn't go well, we still want to be good friends. And in reality, that doesn't happen too often. But we, um, we started this business, and we pulled the plug almost a year into it. We each lost probably about 18000 if I remember correctly. So that stung. We're still good friends today, by the way. Um, so it was a learning experience. And I think for most entrepreneurs who are type A drivers, you know, hard charge and decision makers, in charge type people, it's really, really difficult to have a, a working partnership, especially if it's 50 50. Because in reality, even if you say, this is what I'm responsible for and this is what you're responsible if somebody drops the ball, if somebody's, if, if you, if, you know, for me, I'm like, I will send an email and literally in 10 seconds, I'm wondering why the person hasn't responded. That's how short my patience is, <laughs> right? And some people have, uh, you could have the same vision for the company, but you have a different you're used to a different, let's say, uh, rate of speed or something like that. So, yeah. so that was one. Uh, I'm sure there's others. I'm sure I've wasted a pile of money trying to do Facebook ads myself many years ago. Instead of now, I have somebody who knows what they're doing, do it for me. Um, so, yeah, I've made all the typical mistakes that most people make. And what advice would you give to anyone listening to this as to how to avoid them? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, here's the thing. You know, I. Work with a coach. First and foremost, you should be working with a coach and or be part of a mastermind group because we had our uh, one of our group calls yesterday, as a matter of fact, and you know I, I call them profit seats, not hot seats. And more than a couple people had profit seats and they ask a question and not just get feedback from me, but several other entrepreneurs that are in the group speak up. And so the ability to ask a question about something you're either about to invest in or something, some road you're going to go racing down. There are people who most likely have been there and done that before and will save you the agony or say, yes, that's good, but maybe go this way, something like that. The problem is for most entrepreneurs, we, we tend to work by ourselves. 
uh, you know, occasionally we get out of the office or something. But when you're when you're working by yourself and as the business owner, there's nobody that's going to call you on the carpet, and that's yeah. the reason for working with a coach. You know, I had a, 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 a most of my life a big fear of public speaking. And when my business started taking off, I started getting requests for speaking. I, oh, you know, I'm busy. I'm de- I can't get it. But thanks for the offer. You know, I just didn't do it. Now, because I was the business owner, Chief Dog, you know, said right on my business card, I was the founder and president of my own corporation. <laughs> In other words, nobody was going to take me to task or nobody's going to say, hey, Jim, I want you to go to this group and speak. So we can be our own worst enemy. Now, uh, working with a coach or being part of a group, somebody would say, man, you got to get over that because that is going to be a significant way you grow your business. So anyway, I'm sure there's an answer in what I just said there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's lots of things there. Just a no question on that. Mastermind groups in the UK, uh, in the US, I know, are very strong, but less so here. We actually have a, a mastermind group, which incidentally is by application only. But for those that don't know what a mastermind group is, how, how, would, you, how would you describe that, please, Jim, and, and what that does for a, for a business owner? Well, there are different definitions. My definition is a group of like-minded people all focused on growing their business and each other's businesses. And they come to this. They come to the group in the spirit, knowing that you're going to receive as much as you're prepared to give. I make that really clear in my group. By the way, I said, don't come in on the group call, have your profit seat, and then hang up and leave everybody else hanging. I mean, that's not that's for bad karma, but I won't tolerate it. But um, <clears throat> some people think a, a mastermind group is just a group of uh, business owners who get together once a month at uh, Panera Bread or somewhere and talk about what they're doing. I don't think that's the case. I think you know you need to be willing to invest because if, you're, if it's just a group of people getting together, not that there's anything wrong with that, uh, but if unless you have skin in the game, you're likely to miss a meeting and not give a darn, or you're likely not to take the advice from the people in the group. So I think investing is is a big part of it mm. awesome. brilliant and um, jim i mean you mentioned at the beginning of the call um we also spoke a bit off air before we started recording um you were talking about just that you you aim anyway to to take mondays and fridays off um can you just talk to us a bit about what you do to manage your time because i mean you've got a lot going on you're obviously a really prolific uh implementer what, how do you manage your time how do you get everything done in any given day or throughout the week? Well, I, I live by uh, Google Calendar, and um, I have three people on my team that have access to my calendar. So uh, the person who schedules my interviews, they go right on and see if there's an opening, boom, they plop it in there, and my coaching clients have access to my calendar, and if there's a, if there's a time slot open, they... So I can, I can just look at my calendar. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I basically sit at my desk, and talk on the phone or Skype. I do Skype video, you know, conference calls too, yeah. um, and that's what I do. Now Monday and Friday, you know, during the winter when it's cold, I'm usually working, and that's that's the time I usually write a book, or if I'm creating a new program, or if I'm you know creating some videos and marketing my next live event or something like that, because I can't do it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday because. If there is an opening, it might be a 20 minute opening, or, and you can't get into something, you know what I mean? So, by chunking all of my calls and all of my interviews on three days a week, uh, I, I, Monday and Friday can be ridiculously productive for me because I have no interruptions. I know the phone's not going to ring because it's not scheduled, and I have no, I never make outgoing calls unless they're pre scheduled. So, those are production days for me. Um, but the real reason I get so much done is I've, I have put together a team of people, I've trained them, I've created systems and procedures, I use software like um, Basecamp and things like that so everybody knows what everybody's doing and, and it didn't happen overnight but it, it happens fairly seamlessly right now w- without my needing to touch it. Mm. Brilliant. And what about sort of marketing wise, again I know you've touched on some of the things, but what do you do to grow your business? Uh, I do what it's called the million dollar platform and that's what I teach at my live event million dollar platform consists of several different ways in which to communicate and um, share information everything from newsletters print and email from books audiobooks paperback books Kindle books um, speaking uh, doing interviews like we're doing now my my um, my newsletters I think I mentioned that one already but books (laughs) videos podcasts uh, blogging uh, my websites. Uh, I certainly put money into SEO and uh, paid traffic. 
Um, so there's several things. I feel like I'm missing a couple, but it is, it's every way, shape, and form that you can communicate information because even if you have a, the perfect avatar of who you're just the most perfect prospective customer, what they look like, I guarantee even though they have a lot of similarities, they all consume information differently. I mean, just in the case of a book, by the way, somebody says, yeah, I like to read books. Well, do you like to hold the paperback? I prefer my Kindle. Some people drive in the car, so they listen to audiobooks. So if yeah. all you're doing is putting out a Kindle book, there's still a lot of people, I mean, it's shrinking. There's still a whole lot of people that like to order and hold a paperback. And you know what I mean, and vice versa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So you so you, you literally use as many platforms as possible uh, to, to achieve the the results you desire. In terms That's of right. And, and and so our our mutual uh, mentor Dan Kennedy, I heard him say one time, there was this individual, and um, that it was kind of a I think it was an overheard conversation. Says, well, it's no wonder he's successful. Look how much he does. <laughs> <laughs> when there's a very big clue in that statement. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And you touched on a few things. You touched on Facebook and so on. But on a purely personal level, what's been the biggest breakthrough for you in your business over the last past 12 months or so? Uh, realizing that you're never done letting go. You're never done delegating. Um, the more you can delegate. So here's the thing. If you want to earn a million dollars, let's say you're going to work 50 weeks a year and you're going to work 50 hours just for easy math. That means you have to work, you have to earn $400 an hour. If you do that, you learn a million dollars. The fact of the matter is most people are still like doing task oriented things cuz it's, you know, the old <clears throat> the old mindset of most entrepreneurs, I can do it cheaper, faster and better than anyone else, so why would I pay them to do it? Well, if you're doing work that you could hire somebody whether it's 15 or 20 or $40 an hour and you're doing that work, you're worth 15, 20, or $40 an hour. You yeah. only should be doing high revenue generating activities. And people so often say, well, I can't afford that. Well, I, I say, au contraire. If, if you start at a minimum, hire a good VA for even, um, you know, you could probably hire somebody for even 20 hours a month, right? So what is that, f five hours a week? So 20 hours a month, let's say they earn $25 an hour, that's $500 a month. Now, you, somebody might say, well, Jim, I don't have $500 a month. You can find it on a credit card somewhere. And the thing is, you look at your to-do list and what are the most important things? Maybe it is you started a book, but you haven't finished it. Maybe you were supposed to shoot some videos for this new course you're going to launch, but that's a time-consuming thing that's not done. Find those high revenue generating activities and get those done. With those 20, if, if somebody walked in and said, I'm going to give you 20 hours of uninterrupted time, what would you do? Most people would say, oh, I do this, that, and the other thing. That's four hours right? That's four hours a week or f five hours a week, excuse me, for 500 bucks. So start somewhere. And I'll tell you what, it's very liberating. The more you let go and, and the more you let go of some of this time wasting task oriented stuff, and you only focus on doing what I call high revenue generating activity, that's when the real growth happens. Mm, so awesome. great advice there, Jim. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic advice. And, and talking about, what's, sorry, Drew. I guess I say, Jim, just on advice there, I mean, you, you've mentioned some of your mentors, you mentioned sort of the hot seats you, you've, you've been in as well as part of mastermind groups. What's the best been advice you've been given from a mentor or someone you learn from? Oh, man. Uh, one immediately comes to mind. It's a good thing we're not on video because I'd, I'd still turn red when I tell this story. <laughs> but um, there was a time, um, I think about four years ago, and I was my coaching business was growing. Everything's starting to take shape. And uh, I joined this uh, high-level mastermind group. And in my head, and I don't know if, if this was true, but in my head I thought, well, I'm the least successful one there. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been in a group and you, you look around and go, ooh, I'm the dumb one here. <laughs> not, not that I use that language, but you know what I'm saying? I think, man, these guys are killing it. That's how I felt in my head. And so um, – it was in California, and uh, it's like a five-hour flight for me. So the whole time I'm flying out there, I'm thinking of my presentation. Everybody's going to get up and do a presentation and then get feedback. And so the next morning, we all meet in this, this room, and the lead guy says, um, uh, who wants to go first? I think he said something like, does anybody want to go first, get in the meat grinder, or should we just go around the table? And I honestly, guys, I didn't want to sit there all day waiting for my turn with my knee bouncing up and down like worrying. So I said, I'll go first. He said, okay, good, Jim. So I went up there. I told him what I'm doing and and some of the other stuff. I mentioned some of the, you know, what I considered peers and or mentors of mine that were in the same space. And, and this guy said, uh, 
Jim, I can ask you a question here. What makes you think you're entitled to the same level of success as these other peers and mentors you've mentioned, but yet you're not willing to do the same things they are doing to grow their business? And that was a huge, pardon my expression, it's a bitch slap moment because they, he called me out, right? I, told, I said, I'm not out speaking like I should be. At that time, I, I might have written one book or two books. I don't recall the exact timeline. Uh, videos was kind of new, but I wasn't really comfortable doing videos. All these people that were really killing it, were do, have they had their own live events? I sure wasn't going to do a live event. Good grief. Do you know how much money that costs? What if nobody comes? I mean, all these things that go through your head. Yeah. And so I, as the owner, the president of my own corporation, doggone it, I made the decision. I'm not doing those. So I, in other words, the way I describe it now, and I do tell this story at my event, I said, imagine you're, you're in a, um, a two-lane highway and you're in the regular lane and there's, oh, there's a few people just zooming by you in the passing lane. And those are highly successful people. You're, you're in the lane with everybody else. And I, I used to think, well, I'm not going to get into the passing lane because there's some things over there that are uncomfortable. But I'm going to get over into the right-hand lane sometimes called the breakdown lane. And I'm going to try and go by these guys a little bit faster. Um, but in reality, I, I, I was looking for ways to grow. I already knew how to grow, but I wasn't prepared to step up and do some of those things that might be scary. Wow. And um that that person called me out in front of people, and it, it I, I am forever grateful for that. Awesome, mm-hmm. that is awesome. And Jim, who's been the your the biggest influence on your business journey? Dan Kennedy. <laughs> no hesitation. No hesitation. I, I've studied from many, many, many people. I read my first Dan Kennedy book in uh, two thousand eight. Which, it was which the, one, uh, by the way? It was the black and red one, no BS direct response marketing for non-marketers or something like that. Yeah. yeah. No, well. And I'm reading this book. And I'm sure you're familiar. First of all, Dan's writing. Dan writes conversationally, which is how I write because that's how I talk. And um, I'm reading this book, and he's just talking in his no BS way. I'm, I wondered what no BS means, but he's just calling you out and said, I, I'm paraphrasing, man, if you don't do this, you're a loser. He almost says something <laughs> like that, right? And he says, I'm giving you so much proof. If you don't do it, you know, you're going to be doing the same thing in a year from now and you have nobody to blame but yourself. That's kind of his writing style. Yeah. But then about a third of the way through that book, unbeknownst to me, he talks about newsletters and how powerful they are and how don't you dare wimp out and just try and do an email. And he goes, I'm saying, man, I love this guy. I mean, because I was in the newsletter business. And um, so I got I got really supercharged and excited. I remember I was reading that book on the beach. I went back to the uh, house we were renting. I jumped on Amazon and I ordered every other book Dan Kennedy wrote, all the other no BS books, and I just consumed them in mass quantity. This guy spoke to me. Dan Kennedy is super successful, but he's really a blue collar, hardworking, nose business, you know, nose to the grindstone type of guy. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I can t- so relate to that. And that story there about reading the book and. For both Drew and I, we just read, um, mine was, um, oh, sorry, uh, oh, sorry, it's about something to do with wealth, the first yeah, one I read right. Oh, No yeah. BS Wealth Attraction. Wealth Attraction, yeah. Is it? yeah. Well, by the way, that was the second book I read, and so here's the deal. I told you the story about how I started reinventing myself in the online space. Well, I'm reading this book. Of course, I still I still have like 25 clients for my original business, and but I'm reading this book, and in No BS No BS Wealth Attraction, it talks about how to create celebrity for yourself. Yeah, and saying okay, I, I, I I'm more of a behind the scenes guy, but if Dan says to do it, I basically said if Dan says to do it, I'm going to do it. And um, right about that time, I'm reading this chapter about how to turn yourself into a celebrity, and one of my clients called me. He was a, a big gruff Italian guy. He was a sales trainer. And like I tell everybody, your first newsletter is not going to set the world on fire. You need to do two, three, four to get some traction. But I said, just, I'm just, I'm very clear about expectations, right? And he says, no, I get it. So I, we did his first newsletter about, you know, sales training and stuff like that. Mailed it. A couple weeks later, he calls me up and I'll clean it up for the radio, but he goes, Hey Palmer, you're a effing newsletter guru, right? But he didn't say anything. He cursed me out. <laughs> but I'm like, what? He goes, you're a guru, man. And that I had never heard that term before. I mean, maybe I did, but not in that business context. Yeah. Goes, 
I got three new clients from this. What are you talking about six months? I got three clients, man. You're a newsletter guru. And so I'm reading, I'm hearing that, and, I'm, and I wrote it down. And I thought, okay, Dan says to turn your, just anoint yourself. So I, I became the newsletter guru at that on that day. Mm, that's a great story, by the way. <laughs> and that, that breakthrough, yeah. I don't use it too much, but if you look at uh, Facebook, uh, well, of course, you know, by the time you see this, it might be down my wall. But yesterday kind of marked my 15 years in business, and I posted one of my early incarnations. I had a caricature done of the newsletter guru. It's my, you know, a character of my face, and I was like a Superman body with a cape NG on it. And I put saving, saving small business one newsletter at a time. So that was my first forays into creating celebrity for myself. Awesome. awesome. Jim, this has been an absolutely fascinating interview. Yeah. Um, I can just imagine your listeners are like, don't stop now. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, not that good. Come on. Yeah, okay. All right. you, you brought me down. <laughs> now, seriously, fantastic. Really, you know, you know and yeah, Drew, Drew and I do this all the time, but uh, you've really shared some, some, some gems there. And I, yeah, I'll t- I tell you what's. <laughs> I was thinking as you were talking about that doctor and about application only. I don't know about you, Drew, but I could hear our clients say, "Yeah, but I can't do that." But I just thought that's the way you position that, and and how any business can do that by application only. Um, there's, there's a lot to learn from that. There really is. And, and, well, and by the way, I walk people up to there. You can't go from where you are now to there. No. You know, another client of mine. Um, helps people uh, with grief, overcome grief. And when I started working with her uh, about nine months ago, she was getting a few clients and charging like $195. And I said, $195, you should be like $995. And I thought she was going to like actually throw up. But the thought of charging $1,000 was like so foreign to her. And get, she is charging $1,000 a client now because of the way we positioned her and, and, and things like that. So it really is about positioning. But, you know, you, you have to walk people. And by the way, she didn't go from 199 to 995, raised it to 300 and then 500 and 700. We kept creeping up there as people continued to say yes. And we're at 995 a session now. Mm. Jim, for anyone who's, who's enjoyed this interview, where can people go to find out more about you and what you do? So my home base is uh, getjimpalmer.com, www.getjimpalmer.com. There's some free resources there. Um, I'd love to give your listeners a free copy of my latest book called Decide, The Ultimate Success Trigger. It really is a powerful mindset book. Uh, if you go to decideforsuccessbook.com, decide, F-O-R, successbook.com, um, you, I will ship you a, a, a book. It's, a, it's not a download. It's a paperback book. The only the only uh, charge is six ninety five for shipping and handling, and I don't increase that. I, I mail books all over the world for six ninety five. I think we mailed one to New Finland the other day. It cost me twenty eight bucks, but it's okay. Six ninety five shipping and handling, and I'll mail you a copy of this book that will absolutely change your life. Awesome. That's very very generous of you, Jim. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Yeah, that's that's awesome, and. Uh... Drew, can you make sure that we pull our name down for half a dozen of those books, please, um, before we go? Yep. Jim, that was absolutely fantastic. Again, I'd love to thank you again. Really enjoyed that. Thank you very much oh, indeed. Good. Yeah, yeah, you guys got a fun show. Thank you very much indeed, yeah. Drew, thank you very much for co-hosting the show uh, as usual. Um, mm-hmm. As usual, you have some great questions. And again, Jim, thank you for the, you know, the offer of the three, but that's very, very generous of you. My pleasure. Hey, listen, as, as you're listening to this, if you enjoyed this, now share this with your friends. If you didn't enjoy it, keep it to yourself. This is Terry Edwards, Renegade Recruiter. Until next time, take care, take action, and be relentless.